Hi, my name is Ben. I'm one of the developers of Groundhog Desktop. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to initialize a 3D geological model within Groundhog. The first thing you need to do is define your model extent and uh, geographic location. To do that, I'm going to open up a new map window. And as I'm going to be building this model in the UK, I've got access to this topographic base map which will help me to orient myself geographically. I'm zooming into the area of interest. In this case, it's just the test model we use in the, an area of northwest Norfolk in the UK. If I switch on the British Geological Survey 50k bedrock service, you can see we've got a number of chalk layers outcropping here. And we're going to try and build a little model in this area. So first thing I need to do is decide exactly which extent I'm going to model. So the simplest way to do this is just to zoom the map in and pan the map to the area that you want the model to cover. You can move these slider bars around to get the extent just how you want it, but you can edit this more specifically in the dialog we'll see in a moment. With the extent defined, in the data tree we expand the models tab and in there we have a folder for layer models which is where the geological models are stored. To create a new model I simply right click and select new model. Here we're presented with the model editing dialog and there's a few different options in here we need to talk through. I can define the model extent from uh, a data set, for example a borehole data set. I'm not going to do that right now but you can do it. You can define the extent from a map, which is what we're going to do. So if I click this button here, it will populate these boxes, the range of the X and Y or easting and northing, based on the visible extent of the current map window. Note that it does this with a lot of decimal places, that doesn't really matter, but you can edit those manually if you wish. I'm going to need to give the model a name. So this is centered on the village of Dursing in Norfolk. I'm going to name it accordingly. I also need to tell the model what the elevation cap or clipping layer is going to be. So I need to have preloaded that into my workspace. And in this case, I'm going to use the Ordnance Survey Open Data 50 meter DTM, which I previously imported. But you can use whichever elevation model you've got to hand. And they can be imported from ASCII grid files. So I set that elevation clipping layer now I need to set a cell size. You can change the cell size at any time, so start by just putting a relatively coarse value. I'm going to choose 250 meters, and then just click apply. This will create the Dursing model placeholder in the tree, and then we can double check that we're happy with the extent by adding it to the map window as another layer. Clicking the add layers button reopens the layers dialog, and you can see we now have this dozing model as an option here. If I click apply to add that to the scene and zoom out a little, you can see this black rectangle here is showing the model extent that we've defined. And if I go to the settings for the dozing model layer, there's a few options to control the visualization. One of which is model grid. If I check that on, you can see the model grid that we've defined for the calculation. If I want to change that, I can simply right click on dozing a model in the tree, and then I can edit the model. Simply edit the cell size, I'm going to go for 100 meters, and click apply. At this stage, there are no layers or data inputs into the model, but before we proceed to do that, we're going to need to save the model, because as we calculate the layers, they get cached into the model folder, so we need to save. So go ahead and save the project. Simply give it a name, there's your model, and click save. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add layers 
and then add the inputs to those layers so that we can calculate the geometries.